Okay, so today we're working on a how you do on bowler bag. Um, I printed the pattern at 90% because I wanted it to be a little bit smaller. So I'll pop up on the screen now um, what my print settings were to do that. Um, yeah, this makes the finished bag, I think, about um, 10 inches wide. So I like smaller handbags. So anyway, what I'm doing right now is a reverse applique. Um, I found a free skull clip art image on Vectezy, I think. Um, and I just brought it into my Silhouette software and I traced it and I tried to cut it out on the machine, but I have like a old, old Silhouette and it didn't really work that great. So then I cut it out with scissors. Um, so I cut out the main skull shape, the eyes, whatever, out of my bag panel. Um, and this is reverse applique. So I have then the skull fabric is behind. And I just used some double um, sided tape to stick that on. And then I put a layer of Decoville light over both. And I'm not going to put foam in this bag. Um, but I thought I still wanted the Decoville light so that I have a little extra stability. So right now, I have my machine set to a shorter stitch length. Um, it's on a length of three. And let's see, how do I want to do this? I want to try to sew, I have um, a Teflon foot, which I'm actually going to switch out to my Teflon zipper foot. And I'm going to leave the tails long. I'm not going to backstitch and I'm going to pull them to the back and tie it in a knot. Um, Let's see. I'll just start here at the bottom and I'm just going to sew as close as I can to the edge and I'm using that stitch length of three. Ugh, I've got like machine oil on my hand from something. Okay. Um, this vinyl is from Bob and Jen's Odds and Ends. Both of them are. One is a purple shimmer. I'm not, I know I'm going to not call them the correct names that they call them on the website. Um, but there's the purple shimmer and then the skull that's reverse applique is a black vinyl that is heat sensitive. Um, so when it gets warm, it turns purple. And they have different colors. Um, I bought a pink also, but I know for sure they had a blue. Um, I'm not really sure which other colors, but it's pretty cool. So it's not gonna change right now laying on my sewing machine because the metal is cold enough that even with my hands on it, it doesn't warm up enough to change. But like if I hold it between my hands, then it will heat up or I'm sure once this is made into a bag, if I'm, you know, sitting in the car in the hot sun, it will turn purple. And I'm using a Tech 70 thread that I got from Saya Swag Bags, which is meant for domestics, or I'm sorry, industrial machines. Um, I should have looked, but I don't remember if she has a different weight for domestic machines or not but it's a really nice quality thread my machine seems to do okay with it and then I think I have um, a size 20 needle so to use a bigger thread you want to use a bigger needle also because they have a bigger hole um, so that the thread will glide through if your thread is shredding, it's usually because your needle is not large enough. Alright, so I think I'll go ahead and um, kind of zoom through the rest of this.
thread, so I'm just going to tie knots in the thread. <clears throat> And then we'll just do these. Let me show you the color change. Super cool. Cool. That looks pretty awesome. So now on the other panel, I'm going to kind of sew a spider web design and then applique um, color changing bats on it. So I guess we're going for um, kind of a Halloween thing. I'm going to change my foot here. And I actually switched to a longer stitch length to do the spider web design. So I just kind of started to draw a design on here. Um, We'll see how it goes. This is going to be, again, another situation where I'm going to tie, um, tie this off in the back. Just going to take the first part a little slow here since it's small.
maybe definitely here anyway. That is cool. Huh. All right, so yeah, it just makes three straight lines and then you can uh, kind of freely go between them. All right, so now I have to decide where I want to put these bats. If there's any part that looks not great, I could use a bat to cover it up. I want to make sure that I don't have them where my connectors will go. I might put it kind of just like that. I'm going to real quick just mark out um, like my connector placement and I'm going to do hidden connectors so hopefully I don't mess those up um, not something I do a lot of and of course it's like right along a whole line of stitching so that's bad it'll be fine everything's fine But I just want to make sure I don't put any bats <clears throat> in those spots then. Alright, I think I like that. So these are going to take like forever to sew on. Oh, and I don't have any edge paint, um, but this vinyl had like a fluffy white back and I didn't want it to show, so I totally just used a sharp ear on the edge, which is probably horrible and people are going to judge me for that. But it worked. I'm not like selling this bag. So it's fine. I probably should order some edge paint though. One of those things that I don't think of until I actually need it. And I'm just using small sections of double-sided tape to hold the bats in place so that I can sew them on. Um, I get my double-sided tape from Wawak. One of these days I will look and see if there's any way that tells you how that's actually pronounced but it's wawak.com, which I believe is the same thing as Cleaner's Supply in Canada, so. All right, so both bats are on. 
I'm going to go back down to my shorter stitch length. So I'll probably put a little free check on each of those knots. Um, this was the main part that I was super excited to do. So I didn't even finish cutting out the bag yet. So um, we still have to add the front accent pieces, which I don't even know if I cut out. And then um, we'll do the hidden connectors and then probably sew the straps, um, interior pocket, zipper panel, I'm going to try to turn this instead of doing a drop-in because I'm not feeling like a drop-in lining today. So let me finish cutting everything out and we'll be back to finish this. Okay, so I went ahead and did the hidden strap connectors on one panel and then I'll do the other panel on the video. Um, I was kind of trying to sew some parts off video just to make it maybe not as long. Um, I, of course, forgot to attach these. So when I trace these, I trace them on the back of the vinyl and cut them out, and then I mark what the top is because they're not the same. Um, the straight edge and the straight edge are not the same length. So I mark which side is the top, and you cut to this direction and to the other direction. So let me sew these on real quick. Hopefully I don't run out of my double-sided tape. I'm just running some along the edges. I kind of try to keep it um, out of the area where I'm sewing. I mean, it's okay, I guess, if you sew over it, but it can kind of gum the needle up, so. And this is from Wawac, and it's um, I think a double-sided leather tape. And then you just line this up with the side and the bottom. And I'm just keeping everything the same color. Um, so there's no accent color, but I still wanted the accent panels to, to be on for the look. I don't know. We'll see how it looks. I feel like a lot of um, higher end bags, you know, coach or whatever, that they'll have accent panels, but it's in the same color as the main portions of the bag. So. That was kind of the look I'm going for. But with bats and skulls, obviously. Okay. So let's go ahead and sew these on. Um, and I want to use a, an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Or as close to, I'm going to kind of eyeball it because I have on not my narrow foot that I use a lot. Um, this is just a regular width foot. 
because it's like my better Teflon foot. So, and I think the secret to stitches looking good is like really just like going slow, taking my time. Um, this thread is awesome. Again, I got that from Saya Swag Bags. Um, all of my rainbow hardware and the zippers that I'll use here are from Bedazzled Supplies. Um, and we can get a 10% discount if you use the code GEN10 at checkout. Um, and I will link their website below. So that panel is done. I'm actually, I want to add rivets. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll add all the rivets at once. So I'll do the hidden connectors on this panel. Um, let's go ahead and put the these on accent pieces. I don't know what you want to call them. Um, I get my snips from Havel Sewing. They have very reasonable cutting tools, um, rulers, snips, scissors, um, I think, rotary cutters. I had another whole roll of this tape, but I cannot find it. So I guess I'll just order more and then someday it'll turn up. Um, all this vinyl is from Bob and Jen's Odds and Ends. I'll tag them too, obviously, or link them in the description. Um, they do a lot of pre-order vinyls, but, but they have different vinyl that I don't see other places. So, Like this uh, heat sensitive one, which is what the skull is. I'll have to heat the whole thing up when I'm done to show you how purple it gets. I feel like I don't very often get to make bags um, like out of all vinyl or with fun elements like this that isn't part of the pattern just because I'm usually sewing videos and sewing bags for the pattern 
So uh, the video that goes with the pattern, I want it to follow the pattern exactly. So, oh, this is pretty awesome. I, I'm totally keeping this bag for myself. Okay, for my connectors, the hardware. You just need two rectangle rings, and then I cut the connector pieces um, two inches by four inches. So I'm just going to draw a line lengthwise down the back of each, centered, so one inch in from the long edge. And then put a strip of tape directly down the center. going to fold both long edges into the center line, stick it to the tape, repeat that process on the other one. Alright, now I'm just going to top stitch down each long side um, using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, I'm going to put this connector wrong side up. Um, to cut these marks, okay, I used my pattern piece and I just um, made a line directly where the top of the handle connector placement is. And it's a little over an inch wide, so keep that in mind. You want, it to, you want your line to be one inch wide. Um, maybe a little over so that the whole strap will fit actually, or the whole connector. Okay, so now I'm just with the wrong side up, shoving that through, going down, and I want to pull it to the back by about one, one and a quarter inches. All right, and then I'm going to top stitch um, through the connector and the back side of the main panel. Not, not through the front part. You want to keep that open. And I'm just using um, about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, I'm going to slide on a rectangle ring and then push this back down. And again, it's, it's gonna be like a tight fit, but that's okay, you want it to be that way. So just work until you get it shoved in there. All 
All right, so it should look like that. You have both of your tails of the connector in the back. And now I'm just going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch under that um, raw edge through all the layers. All right, and you guys know my sewing machine, or well, if you've watched my videos before, you might know. My sewing machine is questionable when it comes to top stitching through thicker things, um, back stitching especially. So if you see, I stitched one direction and then instead of back stitching, I just turned the whole project and sewed back in those same holes. So now instead of I'm going, instead of just trimming the threads short, I am going to pull them to the back as well and just tie a couple knots in there quick. Lots of knots in my bag. I should keep a lighter out here and then I could melt the, I put fray check on the back of all my other knots. I could be like melting it since the thread would melt. But I have a lighter in here. Okay, and then we're going to repeat that with the other one. So I just want to shove the first side down through the opening. About an inch and a quarter. And you want to make sure that it's straight. All right, and then I'm top stitching through the connector and what is behind it only, not the front of the slit, but back here using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I just back stitch and forward stitch a couple times there. Okay. Now we'll slide the other rectangle ring on. I just got a really good idea. So I have um, like Jack Skellington zipper pulls and I could totally do like a reverse applique Jack Skellington on a bag with those zipper pulls. That would be awesome. All right, so I'm just pushing these through to the back. And again, remember that's, that's a pretty tight fit, but that's how you want it to be. So just keep working at it until you get it to go through. And then I just kind of pull this down and make sure that um, they're both the same height, the same amount of connector is sticking up on each side. And then I'm going to top stitch again using an eighth of an inch seam allowance below the opening. And I'm just going to hand stitch this since it's so thick. And then instead of back stitching, I turn the whole project around and sew forward back through those same holes. Alright. And then pull my threads to the back and tie them in a knot. And then I'll put fray check on that knot as well.
just want to make sure that none of these knots come out. I don't know if I already got those ones. And I do leave like a little tail on each of the knots also. Okay, so we should probably go ahead and put the rivets in now. Um, so let me decide where I would like to place those. I'm going to decide based on this side so that I can make it not go through the stitching. So if I put it about three eighths of an inch beneath the opening and centered, then I won't have to cut that stitching. So I'm just going from this um, cut edge here and measuring down about three eighths of an inch and centering it. And then I just make a dot. Same thing on this one. And I'm kind of guessing on where the 3 8 falls exactly because um, I don't have a 3 8 mark right there. Oh, I probably could have used my new little tool that I got from Bedazzled Supplies. Let me check that out. See, I've never used one of these little seam guides. Oh, there is a 3 8 inch though. Okay, so it looks like from here to here is 3 8 of an inch. Oh, and I don't know how... Hmm. Now I'm eyeballing where, centered, where it is centered though, because I don't think... That's pretty cool though. This could be a good tool for things like that, measuring rivet placements and such. Maybe. Maybe I need to watch a video of how to use it, right? But isn't it cute? Okay. So all my rivet marks are made. Rivet placement marks? Whatever. Um, I have rivets also from Bedazzled Supplies. And of course they're rainbow. All of the hardware is rainbow on this. Um, let's see. First I'll punch holes and I use this um, candy leather punch. And I'm just centering it over the marks I made and then squeezing tight. So you kind of have to crunch some of the bag up to get it to that point, but it's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, and then on this side. usually try to like rotate it to make sure that it cuts through all the layers but all right and here I'm just gonna make sure I'm not cutting my stitches just right next to them okay now I'm going to use my rivet press which I got from gold star tool I think um Cam Snaps also actually sells one, and that's probably the better place to get it from. Um, I've just heard so many issues with the ones from Gold Star Tool. Mine was fine, but I also bought it like years and years ago. So I'm just going to pop one rivet post. These are 10 millimeter rivets from Bedazzled Supplies.
And I think, I think the bag comes with 20 rivets in it. And that's one thing I never ever, like I literally just got all rainbow from her. Um, I never remember to buy rainbow rivets. So like I'll have rainbow hardware, rainbow zippers, rainbow zipper pulls, and I never ever get rivets. I don't know why. So now I finally have rainbow rivets. And I got purse feet, which I don't normally use, but they screw on um, and they look really cool. So we're gonna give those a try. Hopefully, um, I don't know where I wanna measure, how I wanna measure them. So I'll have to figure that out. All right, so then I'm just going to go in, place my rivet on the bottom part, center it in the top, and I just put all my weight on the handle to um, secure them. I used to hammer them. Um, I had like an anvil and whatever, and I would hammer my rivets, but I feel like they were never quite secure. Well, those are super pretty. All my rivets are in place now. So I cannot remember what length I had you cut the handles in the pattern. I feel like it's 16 inches, which is like a little bit longer. I made, I remember I printed my bag at 90%, so it's already a little bit smaller. Um, but then I made my handles only 14 inches long, which I think is probably too short for most people. But I like really short handles. so. That's the beauty of sewing your own bags, is that you can make your handles any length you want. Um, you maybe even want to cut them longer, 16 or 18 inches, and then cut them down to whatever size you want. Um, like when you're when you're attaching them to the bag and you can really see what size you want them to be. So, I already sewed one handle. And then I figured I'd just record one. So, all right, double-sided tape down the center, and then I'm going to fold each long edge into the center line. And I actually have seatbelt webbing, um, one inch wide seatbelt webbing that I also bought from Bob and, Jen's, Bob and Jen's Odds and Ends, and I only have black right now. I know they had rainbow at one point and they did a pre-order which I think might be over right over now but then I think that probably means there will be retail of other colors um but I ordered several colors um on their pre-order because it's like amazing quality like really really awesome webbing so um I thought it would be kind of cool to have the webbing on the inside of my handle um, and then the vinyl on the outside. So that's what it looks like. It's really, really smooth, but it's also very like a very sturdy weight. I don't know how to explain it, but, but it's thin at the same time. It's not like thick and bulky. So I thought honestly that it might be thinner than having um, traditional straps that are like four four layers of vinyl thick. And then I have strap ends that screw on, also rainbow, rainbow and also from Bedazzled Supplies. And I'm going to use those. So I didn't worry about um, finishing the edge of my um, webbing. I might hit it with a lighter quick. Um, but just because it's going to be inside of a strap end anyway, so it's not gonna be exposed to unravel. All right, so then I just, this actually, the webbing is a little bit wider. I cut my strap or my handle two inches wide, but I think just because of the thickness of the vinyl, 
that it kind of ends up being a little bit less than an inch. So the webbing's just a touch wider than it, but I like that look. And then just trim that off. And then I'll top stitch this using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm using a stitch length of five. out of bobbin. So let's see. Again this bag is for me and I'm totally not redoing that. Should I take all the <sighs> I should I should resew this whole side, right? Let's try that again. Hopefully I go kind of in the same holes. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try a little bit. Both straps are done. Um, we'll put the ends on them after they're attached to the bag. So I guess I'll go ahead and put the purse feet on. I don't really know. I don't know. I don't use feet often. Um, so if there's like some kind of standard placement, I don't really know what it is. So let me just find where the center is first. I have five feet, so should I put one in the middle? It's not a huge bag. Well, this knocks out the step later when I have to measure and mark the centers anyway. So it'll already be done. Might as well go all the way across. one it would go right in the middle right so there how about like hmm. I'm gonna do one inch so one and a half this look funny so this is two inches in from the short end and one and a half inches in from the um, long side oh, I think that would be good placement so probably to make sure that they're even that's two inches and then one and a half. I'll measure that all the way down so that way I have all my marks even. One and a half here. So yeah, if you print, nope, that's one and a quarter. If you print 
at 90%, you should be able to use these measurements also. And I figure I have five per feet, so I might as well use all five, right? I want two inches in from the short end. Okay, so I need my leather hole punch again. And I'm just going to punch a hole at each of the four corner points, and then one dead in the center. And I do have a piece of Decoville Heavy on the bottom here. So, and I don't know if I can even get to that one. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to see. Pop the screw through each of the holes. And I got a screwdriver and I have um, super glue also, like Gorilla Glue, just to place on each of these um, to make sure that over time they don't come unscrewed. If I had like Loctite that would probably be better. But I think super glue should be okay. So I just need to make sure I use the like the tiniest dot of it though, so that it doesn't seep out. Hopefully it's not dried up. Okay, so I just put a tiny dot right inside the hole. And then I have a tiny screwdriver. Um, I might actually need another piece of Decoville. Let me pull this back out of here. So I'm going to cut, it doesn't screw in completely tight. Um, I'm going to take each of these out and get a tiny little square of Decoville to put behind each screw to make it thicker. So I'll just this doesn't even need to be um, ironed on. Glue. Oh, it's that one. I'll do that one first. Just trying to work quick so that the glue doesn't dry before I get it screwed in. And I'm holding the foot in my left hand and then screwing the screw in my right hand. Okay, that's much better. So yeah, it definitely works better to put an extra scrap of Decoville behind it.
Well, and honestly, that probably is a good idea so that they don't pull out too over time. Maybe this is why I don't use purse feet. It's just more work, but it's gonna look awesome, so worth it, right? Well, and I guess I don't use them because again, I'm sewing things according to my pattern and I don't like to require extra things. Um, so I guess you could always use purse feet on almost any bag that has a flat bottom. Look at that, looks so nice. This iridescent hardware with this like shimmer purple vinyl i don't know the name of it um really cool okay so now we've installed all that we sewed the straps let's go ahead and do the zipper panel all right i think we're going to use lightning bolt zipper pull because i have a better idea now for the jack skellington um so I'm going to put two zipper pulls on it because I want a double pull zipper. And this, um, we're going to try to turn the bag. Okay. So instead of doing a drop in lining, I'm going to turn it. And again, remember I printed it at 90%. So measurements and such are different here. Um, I just, to measure my zipper, I'm just laying it along the long straight edge of the um, zipper panel. And I'm not going to put my zippers on it just yet, or my zipper poles on it. Because it's easier to sew without the poles. I'm just trying to think through how to do this to make it turned. I want to do similar to how we make the Triviani Traveler. Okay. 
All right, I have these rainbow clips from sewwhatever.com. Um, and Lauren Mormino, who is the owner of, no, is not sewwhatever.com, mormino.com. Her Facebook group is called Sew Whatever. Um, she also has a video for the How You Do Them Bowler Bag where she turns it. Um, it's not drop-in, so if you want to check her video out. She does things different also, like um, just just some things like the way she does it. People, different people do things differently, so the way she does something might be easier for you than the way I do something. So definitely check her videos out. They're awesome. She's awesome. Okay. So I have lining and exterior right sides together. Zippers is sandwiched in between with the right side of the zipper facing the exterior side of the gusset, zipper gusset. And I'm going to sew this starting half an inch from the end, but I actually want to start a little more than half an inch. I'm going to start one inch from the end because I just want to be extra safe. And this is important to be able to turn it instead of, and I'm just going to use like, um, this should be a 3 8 inch seam allowance, but since we printed at 90%, it's going to be a little bit less. So I'm just using like just over a quarter of an inch. Might be helpful to switch out to a zipper foot right here. And then make sure you stop again when you get to that one inch mark and back stitch a few stitches. Thankfully, I made three bobbins, so let's see if that's going to be enough um, to do the whole bag. Okay, now, obviously, I'm using vinyl and waterproof canvas, so I can't really iron this. So, finger press. Thankfully, when you kind of finger press um, waterproof canvas, it actually, like, creases it. But I'm just folding both of the zipper zipper gusset panels and I'm probably calling everything the wrong name okay so but I'm folding them both away from the zipper and wrong sides together so it'll be like this and we're going to top stitch and I think I might just do a quarter of an inch top stitch since I have um, a quarter inch foot on here and you want to start that also um, about an inch from the end. Back stitch a couple stitches. Okay, and I'm just going to take my time. And I'm still using my stitch length of five. I would not suggest probably trying to make this whole bag out of vinyl and waterproof canvas on a domestic machine. I mean, my I have a Juki 8700, DDL 8700. <laughs> that DDL is important. Um, 
so it's stronger than a domestic, but it's not like a walking foot strength machine. It's pretty good though. It has its limitations, as I've shown over and over again. But it has served me well. I think I've used this machine for, wow, I don't know, seven years maybe? It's been a while. Okay, so we have one side attached, and now we'll do the same with the other side. right sides together and we're attaching the zipper to the long straight edge of the zipper gusset. Let me see what the correct name is of this pattern piece. Exterior zipper panel. And we're putting right sides together and the right side of the zipper is facing the right side of the exterior the zipper panel and we cut both of these from the exterior zipper panel pattern piece the reason why the lining um, zipper panel pattern piece is a little bit wider is for doing the drop-in lining so if you're doing a drop-in you want to use that one because you will follow the pattern directions and you'll fold a little bit more under um, to the wrong side there. So just keep that in mind. Okay, again, I want to start sewing about an inch in from the raw end. back stitch and I'm using just over a quarter of an inch seam along rather than a full three eighths inch. to the end. See how easy that is to not pay attention? My um, seam ripper is getting its work today. They're getting its uh, money's worth out of it. I don't know. And I just dropped like a ton of pins on the floor. It's not my day. wanted to stop at one one inch from the end there so I'm going to just go back in here and kind of do a few back stitches just tack that open to end in place And we'll repeat. I'm first going to finger press the whole lining away from the zipper. And the waterproof canvas kind of stays creased a little bit, so that's helpful. And then fold the exterior vinyl portion back as well. And I'm just going to get in here and start top stitching, and I'll fold it back as I go. So I'm starting an inch from the end. And I just want to do a couple back stitches. 
And then when you stop to adjust anything or to straighten out your panels, always stop with the needle in the down position. that you again stop about an inch from the end. And I'm just back stitching a few stitches. I'm going to slide my zipper pulls on that I already got out of here. I don't know where I put them. See that I'm very organized. Okay, so to have it be a double pull zipper, we want both of the zipper pulls. We're going to open up one end and slide one on to that end. It's just important to keep make sure that they're lined up properly. See how I have a, a kind of a bubble on that side? That's because it's not lined up right. With it being already sewn to the panels, it's just important that it is lined up right. Um, and you don't, I think this can be helpful if you have one of the zipper majigs or fork tools or whatever, just kind of, it gives you an extra hand. Um, but it is possible to do it without anything because I don't have anything. So. So now we have our double pull zipper with lightning bolt zipper pulls, which are super cool, also from Bedazzled Supplies. And pretty perfect for this bag. So I'm going to Now, I'm placing the lining um, zipper panels right sides together with, I'm trying to think how, we're going to fold the exterior um, and zippers away. So hang on, I actually want to sew it from this side. Okay, so I'm folding the exterior and the zipper away from the lining. So right here I just have the lining panels. And I'm just going to sew across this using a half inch seam allowance. And you can use slightly less than a half an inch since we did reduce this to 90%. So, I mean, if you print it at full percent, 100%, <laughs> um, 
then you'd want to make sure you use a full half inch seam allowance so that everything fits together properly. I'm using just a tiny bit less than a half inch. Okay. Now I'm going to place the exterior panels right sides together and the zipper does get sewn into the seam. or just under. Okay, and then again, let me see if I can figure this out. Laura Mormino showed a post in my group of how you can top stitch the hole and the lining closed right here some way, but she cut something. I think. Okay, so I'm just cutting up to the stitching. Okay. So I cut up to the stitching um, right outside of where that seam allowance is. Then I'm going to leave that portion facing down when I top stitch through this and fold the other, the other parts back. And then I think that will sew that hole closed. And again, I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance, um, even though I have half an or an eighth of an inch. You know what? No, I'm not. I'm going to use an eighth of an inch so that it lines up with the accent panels. So I want to make sure that everything else is pulled back out of the way, except for that tiny little part. And I switched back to my longer stitch length, which I use a, a stitch length of five. Let's see how this is. Okay, hole is stitched closed. Okay, so both sides are still detached of the lining, which is what you want, and the exterior. Um, and that's what we need so that we can make it turn turn tag. Alright, let's attach the lining first. Oh, I want to finish this because I know if I leave it to do on a weekday, it's not ever going to get done. I don't want to sew after I get home from work. All right, so I have the lining pieces right sides together and I'm pulling the exterior portion back out of the way. I'm just sewing that together using a slightly less than a half inch seam allowance. And then we'll work 
kita and I'm matching up the end of the gusset the end of the zipper panels with the short edge of the side panel or whatever it's called And here we sew through the zipper. We did not attach the zipper to the lining. Interesting allowance. to let's not use those trim through the lining panel just next to the zipper where the zipper is attached and then I'll fold all of this out of the way but leave that center portion down so that way it sews that opening closed my top stitch Again, I'm giving credit for that to Lauren Warmy now because she posted it in my group. I'm pretty sure that's how she did it, and if it's not, it works still, so. And I'm top stitching this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. The gusset is completed. Now, probably do the interior zipper pocket. I cut um, two pieces for the interior pocket and I cut them 10 inches wide by 7 inches tall, um, which is kind of the biggest pocket I could fit. So, I'm just real quick going to finger press this to mark the centers. place um, the zipper panel. I'm just going to line it up with the bottom, honestly, to make it easy on myself. Right sides together with one lining main panel. And I'm going to use these flat clips from mormino.com to kind of hold this in place since I don't want to poke pins through my waterproof canvas. It works out since they're like nice and long. Okay. And then I'm just going to sew. I marked, I made a box that's one inch down from the top and it is eight inches long, half inch wide. So I, one inch down from the top, I make an eight inch line centered and then half inch down from that, another eight inch line. Now I'm just going to sew directly over that box using a shorter stitch length. So I put it on three. Always stop in the corners with your needle in the down position.
So now we're going to cut directly down the center of that box. And I'm just going to cut all the way to about half an inch away from the end. That's so not half an inch. And then diagonally to each of the corners. And just don't cut through your stitching. And then I'll do the same at the other end. Um, and then I'm actually going to iron this which I think is okay as long as you don't iron it on the plasticky side, or at least that's what I do, and it's okay. So I need to turn my pocket um, through the hole to the wrong side. All right, so I pressed that to the wrong side, and I'm gonna use one of these other zipper holes on the interior. Do you want to do that or should I keep it the same? No, you know what? I'm going to use the lightning bolt. But I also got these cool zipper poles that are rectangular from the same place for Dazzle Supplies. These lightning bolt ones are worth, like way too cool though. So. Alright, and I'm going to cut a length of zipper that's just a longer than the hole. Make sure it's longer than your rectangle opening. mine to open that way. Oh my god, that is so pretty. This zipper pull with all black and that zipper tape. I don't know if the rainbow iridescent shows. Oh wow. It's just beautiful. Okay. Where's my tape? So I'm going to place, and here I'm going to have no choice but to sew through it though when I do this, but it just helps me hold the zipper in place. And I think I need to order some 1 8 inch wide zipper tape also, or um, double stick tape, double sided tape for attaching zippers because sometimes this quarter inch wide tape is a little bit too much and it sticks out and we don't want that. So I'm going to pull off one side only. Kind of eyeball that from this side and then flip it over to see if I have it centered. And readjust that as necessary, as needed. And I haven't been one to always use number five zippers um, for like my interior zipper. But I kind of, I've been using um, my, oh, what bag am I using? Ugly Naked Guy Hobo um, for a while. And I used a number five zipper in that and I actually prefer it because it's nice to have like a nice big zipper pull to grab instead of, you know, a tiny little number three. So I might be converting to using number five zips on my inside pockets. Okay, so that looks nice. I'm making it worse. Okay. 
so I put this back on the longer stitch length and I'm going to use like an eighth of an inch seam allowance but I'm just going to sew as close as I can um, I don't feel like changing my foot so it might be a little more than an eighth of an inch but I'm just sewing with my zipper or my um, presser foot directly along the zipper teeth Now if you want to add any other pockets, I'm going to just leave it to this one pocket. If you want to add any other pockets, you want to go ahead and do that now. Um, and also if you want to add like your tag on the inside of the bag or any like handmade um, plaques or any of that stuff to the outside or inside or whatever, go ahead and do that now before we assemble it. It will be easier. And hopefully we're going to turn this right side out through this pocket. So it might be a lot to shove through an 8 inch wide pocket, but we'll see. Okay. So now we'll take the other zipper panel and again I cut these 10 inches by 7 inches and then I just lined it up with the bottom to make it easy the bottom straight edge of the lining um, so now I'm just placing these right sides together and go ahead and place a few clips around the edges And I'm using a half inch seam allowance and then I'm going to trim it down um, because right now a good portion of this is going to be in my seam allowance when I attach the um, gusset. So I think we're ready to kind of assemble now. I'm trim my seam allowance. And just make sure that when you trim it that your um, lining main panel is folded back out of the way. And I'm just trimming it so that it's not in my, get, so it doesn't get caught in the seam allowance when I attach the gusset. Okay. I love this. The purple thread with the black waterproof canvas and the rainbow iridescent um, pull and zipper tape. It's just beautiful. So the thread again is from Saya Swag Bags and zipper tape and zipper pull from Bedazzled Supplies. Okay, now I need to attach things to the gusset. I don't know if it's going to be easier one way or another. I'm going to, I think, 
I'm gonna attach one exterior first and see how that goes. So you wanna just make sure that the lining stays back out of the way. Um, and you wanna mark your centers. Center top, center bottom of both exterior main panels, center bottom of the um, gusset ends, whatever side panels, and then the center of each of the long zipper panels. So I'm matching, fold your connectors down, and I want to match the center top to the center of my zipper gusset, right sides together. And I'm just going to put a couple clips here. Okay, and then I'm going to bring, and I didn't put any interfacing on the zipper panels, gussets. Um, because I felt like it wouldn't need it. This, this vinyl is pretty thick and I did already add the Decoville light to the main panels. So I guess we'll see how it is if I should have done it or with vinyl that you kind of have to use your own judgment whether it needs it or not. And it depends on the vinyl and this vinyl is pretty heavy. So like some of these parts my sewing machine might struggle with. We'll see. And I love the size of this bag at 90%. Um, the last one I made for myself, I also printed at 90 just because I like small bags. So if you don't like super small bags, then print it full size. Um, I think one of my testers, Angela, she actually prints hers at, I think, 110% to make it just a touch bigger um, because she likes big bags. So personal preference. You, that's very easy to resize most patterns just by printing at a different percentage. Um, and again, that's the beauty of making your own bags. You can make it how you want it. And you do want to make sure that the lining, um, or the, yeah, mm -hmm, the overlay, the contrast overlay thing on the front lines up with the side panel um, where it's attached to the zipper gussets, the zipper panels. You know I'm calling these all the wrong names the whole time. I should have a list. Every time I make a video, I call every pattern piece by the wrong thing. And when I name them, I try to make it like the most obvious, easy, not weird name. And then I say the wrong thing the whole time. So, um, yeah, just make sure that that little corner contrast piece is lined up with the side panel accent thingy. Let's see what that piece is called. The side gusset panel. Okay, so now you want to make sure that your lining is pulled back out of the way. And I'm going to start at the bottom and you may or you might want a zipper foot for this. Do I want a zipper foot? I do. And I might use the zipper foot for the whole like main construction part. Um, and the zipper foot for this, it goes right up to the edge. There's no extra little piece in the back like on a domestic. So I don't know if they make a zipper foot like this for domestics, but if they do, I would recommend it. And again, I'm using slightly less than a half inch seam allowance because I printed at a smaller percentage. I put my stitch length on 3.75. And just keep in mind that some of these parts are a little bit thick if you're using all vinyl. So. Oh, and my sewing machine didn't mind it, surprisingly. Um, and of course, to interface, I'm using Decoville Light instead of foam. So the pattern calls for foam interfacing, and I just really didn't want to use foam. It's not my favorite. 
Um, I, I use it, I, honestly, I use it in my patterns mostly because it's easily available. You can find it almost everywhere. It can be difficult to store stucco bell light. Um, although, Mary Beth made it. Um, she carries stucco bell light. And also, I think also Bedazzled Supplies had deco bell light. So, two good sources to find that product that's highly sought after. And I think they, I don't, I can't say they both had it in stock. Bedazzled Supplies definitely has it in stock. Or did a week ago when I bought my hardware. Um, Mary Beth made it. I don't know if she has it in stock currently. Let me trim that seam allowance. Let me make sure actually that it looks okay. Oh my god, this bag is going to be amazing. I'm in love already. Look at that. If anybody wants to copy me, you can do exactly this. Um, and I do not care. Copy me. Um... I'll even try to actually, the, oh, I don't know if I remember where I got the bats from. So I downloaded free clip art. So I literally just searched for free clip art on Google. Um, the skull I think was from Vec to Easy, which you have to create an account, but they have a lot of like free different clip art there. And then I traced it into my silhouette software. And I tried to cut it that way, but my silhouette is like super old and it doesn't always work that great. Um, so I tried that and then it didn't work and I had to cut it by hand anyway. And I did the bats the same way. I tried it that way, it didn't really work and then I had to do it the other way. So, um, but both were just free clip art that I found on Google. So you really could print it at different sizes, whatever size you want it to be and trace it onto the vinyl and cut it out with like a craft knife. That would work. So I'm just going to, I don't know what the easiest way is to do this, to be able to turn it since I haven't done it before. So I'm just doing kind of one side at a time and we'll see, we'll see what works. Um, I should have marked my centers better. I just had folded them so I can see where they are, but um, again, clearly I don't know what I'm doing. Let's see. I'm going to push the gusset. No, I think this is fine. So I'm just matching up now. I did one, I kind of, okay, like I said, Lauren, Lauren Mormino did a video for this, to make this a turn bag, so go watch hers, <laughs> it's probably better than mine anyway, um, and I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't know if this is going to work out, so, her video was good, I, I kind of watched it, but I don't really remember I feel like she did one exterior side and then like one lining side and then the other exterior and the other lining I don't know I just know that her bag turned out right so whatever she did it must have been right so that's all I need to do is whatever she did but I don't know if I am doing what she did If I have to get out the seam ripper one more time though, then I'm done for the day. So cross your fingers that I'm not messing this up.
So I just thought I was match it up at the top center first and then at the bottom. Edge and then ease between and around the top corners. And then as I sew, I'll just have to hold that zipper pocket back out of the way. All right, so let's see how this works. Half inch seam allowance. just really holding that uh, interior zipper pocket back out of the way as I go around the corner so that I don't catch it in this seam. Um, and the only reason I made the zipper pocket that big is so that I would have the widest opening to turn this right side out through. I know that most people do not like um, drop in linings or binding and I get it because it's not the easiest the finish looks nice usually like binding especially I love the way the finish usually looks but it's not always so fun to get to that point I don't enjoy doing the binding um, I actually one time I made a bag that had binding a binding finishing method along the top of it this was like Oh my gosh, years and years and years ago when I first started like sewing bags. And I got to that point and I was like, oh no, binding. I took it to my mom and had her finish it. So I can't always do that. Well, and honestly, now it wouldn't work because my mom doesn't have a, an industrial sewing machine. So I have to do my own binding or figure out an alternative. So usually you can figure out a way to turn a bag it just isn't always the easiest okay do i want to i think i'm going to trim i hope i don't regret this i'm going to trim the seam allowance down now And I definitely suggest sewing on the lining side that has the pocket first because you have to hold that all out of the way and I think that the second lining side is going to be a little more difficult to attach so okay so now I'm going to flip this so it's on the right side out but not just so those two lining sides that are attached are both on the same side, or the two panel main panels that are attached are on the same side now. So I'm still inside out. Okay, I'm going to fold this other lining panel back out of the way. I'm going to attach the other, so so far so good, attach the other exterior main panel which the exterior panels are a little easier to sew in because the vinyl holds its shape so well. Although I do enjoy 
uh, waterproof canvas for linings more than like quilting cotton. And when I cut the um, deco bell light for my lining, I cut it back out of the seam allowances so that it was a little bit less thick. Okay, I think, I think this is gonna work out okay. I think so. All right. Now again, just under a half inch seam allowance. trim this seam allowance. Oh no. I caught just the very corner of the lining right here. Thankfully I only have to take out like three stitches I think. Maybe four. Jeez oh man. Catch anything else? I did not. I have to go back over that spot. Thankfully I noticed that before I cut anything.
one more. I'm like super excited to sew the bottom panel on. I'm gonna do that instead of the lining. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of squish this up. I guess that's the right way. Just squish it. So, we'll see, this part might be a little bit more difficult to sew. If I can, I'm gonna unzip the main panel. I don't know if that'll make a difference, but I think it, it's gonna need to be unzipped anyway. So this is a good point probably to unzip everything. All right, tuck that down. Part, I'll just have to be really careful not to catch like my zippers or anything in the seam that I only have the two lining layers there but yeah I definitely recommend sewing the lining side with the interior zipper pocket on first um, because that just added one more challenge of keeping that out of the seam allowance and I don't think you'd want that right now because this part's a little bit dicey. So I'm just pushing like the whole the zipper and everything is like kind of trying to get in here and I'm just pushing it back out of the way. making sure I would be able to, that I'll be able to get to my um, pocket and turn this right side out when I'm done. And I think I'm good. Okay, now here I'm just sewing the lining, the other side of the gusset, lining gusset to the other side of the lining. And I just want to make sure the whole time that the only thing being sewn are those two panels and that the zipper did not somehow get in there because it's kind of right next to where I'm sewing. And this is easiest to sew with, with the gusset portion down against the bed of the sewing machine. Well, at least if you have a um, industrial. That was one thing that I used to have problems with when I had a domestic, is that the end of the sewing machine would come out so much further that it would get in the way. Definitely. Having an industrial is nice for that, but everything just gets nice and flat on the end. Um, it makes life easier. Not that this can't be done on a domestic. I don't know that I would use this much vinyl, but bags can definitely be made on domestic machines as well. You just have to know what your limitations are, um, and sometimes you have to do things just a little bit differently to make it work.
Let me make sure that the zipper is not caught in that at all. And it's not. So that's good. Okay. You know, a really good way to make sure I'm going to zip the zipper all the way across. And as long as it zips all the way, then I know it's not. And then I have to reopen it. Okay, yeah, we're good. Okay, now re unzip the zipper if you just did that. Yeah, so I'm looking at this cone of thread from Saya Swag Bags. I'm pretty sure it's going to last me forever and ever because it's like huge. Um, I'm going to trim this seam allowance down. We are so close to being done. Like this is coming together pretty quick. After, after the main like decorative parts were added, and especially for me, like not really knowing what I'm doing here. Okay. Do I want to attach the bottom? Which, which side do I want to attach the bottom to first? I think I'll do the lining because I think that one's going to be a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Okay, so I should have done this ahead of time. What's the fun in that? So I need to mark the bottom center. The center on each long side and I'm just going to clip usually I mark it with a pen but you can also just snip in a little bit just don't snip in farther than the seam allowance And then the bottom of each main panel, which I can see where I folded it. Um, and then the bottom of each side panel, which I cannot see where I folded it. So I'm just going to kind of try to fold it right now and mark the center. Why do I always do things like this? You know, and I haven't made this bag in like forever, but I also didn't pull up the directions. Which you'd think I wouldn't need directions for a pattern I wrote, but I do. For things like this, to remind me when to mark centers and stuff. All right, so now I'm just matching up the center of the long edge of the bottom panel to the long edge of the main panel, lining right sides together. And I'm doing the lining first because I think the lining is going to get a little more tricky. So let's just get that out of the way. What if I can't turn this right side out when we're done? What if I cannot fit those main panels with all that Decoville light and then the Decoville heavy that's going to be on the bottom panel? I might not fit it through that zipper pocket. I Now matching the center of the short ends. Yeah, I didn't I didn't write the pattern this way for a reason, I guess, because this is a little sketchy. But I am totally looking forward to not doing the drop-in lining, so 
And now I guess you have to pick. This might be a little harder, but you don't have that drop in lining at the end. But sometimes it's just messy. I don't know. If you have a cylinder arm machine, like Piera, who watches my videos and told me she watches them, even though nobody I actually know is supposed to watch these. Um, so if you're watching, I just called you out, but she has a cylinder machine, a cylinder arm machine, and um, it must, I don't know, it just makes her drop-in lining super simple. And let me tell you, her bags look freaking amazing, so. And I think everybody in the sewing world knows who Piera is. And I, I'm sure you would all agree that her bags are pretty amazing, so. Someday I might have a cylinder arm. And then maybe I'll like drop ins more. And I think she did her binding on it too. I don't remember. and see how it works out. Seems a little sketchy, but... There we go, just fold the main panel out of the way. Hopefully when I get done, there's not too many, like, creases in my vinyl. I guess maybe, the, maybe I can, like, blow dry them out. And now I'll probably run out of thread again, right like on a curve. But I did make three bobbins ahead of time, so I'm prepared. As long as I don't have to seam rip again. Also making sure that I'm holding my interior zipper pocket interior zipper pocket up out of the way. Okay, this is not as bad as I thought it would be so far. Maybe I shouldn't speak so soon. I'll not say anything until I'm done.
me see if it looks bad before I say anything. Looks pretty okay. Okay, that was not as horrible as I thought it would be. So I'm going to very carefully trim this seam allowance. Maybe the worst part is going to be turning it right side out. There's no way that's going to be easy. So on to the exterior. Oh my, what am I doing? Okay, so we just want to make sure that the lining is out of the way now. Super excited for this. Super, super excited. Like I've never wanted a bag to be done more so I can see it because I feel like I don't get to be so creative that often and just do what I want. Miss it, and here I thought I didn't even like sewing anymore. But I think it's just because I don't ever just do something for fun. So I need to start doing more of that, right? Like make a new pattern, you know, make my video for how it's supposed to be, but then maybe make a video for something just fun or just sew something for fun. Just whatever I want. I need to be creative more often and not let it be all about like work. I'm just matching up centers before centers and easing around the corners. And it can be a little bit thick here um, where the side seam is. So I do have my seam allowance um, on each of the four corners is clip, clipped over kind of toward the side panel because it seems like that's like the way it wants to lay naturally um, because it's thicker on the main panels where that overlay is. Alright, so let's see how this goes. And I always start on the long edges, um, it's easier there. And the zipper foot again is very helpful for this part, especially for the exterior bottom panel. I fully anticipate that I should run out of bobbin thread at any moment. Oh, 
where's my stiletto? So the other end of my seam ripper that I got from Mary Beth made it is a stiletto, which I didn't have before and I used a tiny screwdriver and it was a pain. Um, hold on, it's kind of tight to pull out, but super, super helpful and like awesome. And I can't believe I didn't have one for so many years. So yeah, if you're in the market for like a fancy custom seam ripper slash stiletto, check out Mary Beth Made It. She has a Facebook page and I think actually just launched a website like marybethmadeit.com. She has um, custom orders. I think she opens up like slots for them, not overwhelm herself. And also I think re retail drops every now and then. So check it out. I think join the Facebook group. To join her Facebook group, there's information there. Um, all over the place. So when you adjust this, you should always adjust it with your needle down. Oh, I hate, I don't like this. Normally I stick my hand inside the bag right now and I can't. straight edges are so nice. <laughs> Going around the curves at that end are a little bit more difficult. See how it looks. Okay, I think I might, I'm gonna go around that corner again. Look for any any like parts where stitches might have been skipped or it just looks a little loose or whatever. Um, if you want to go back over corners where the seams were thick, it's not a bad idea. seams actually. Just to make sure. 
sure that they're all going to be good. And I'm just sewing right back over top of the last line I was sewing. It can be a little bit easier without the clips in the way. Let me just hit it anyway, just to make sure. Um, and the only reason I'm doing this is because with all the vinyl it's so thick. And it kind of looks like the thread's a little bit strained in some spots. trim this seam allowance and then we'll see if we can turn it right side out or not. Make sure nothing's in the way that you don't cut through anything that you don't want to with the lining. Oh, also something else I did different. I did not attach, I didn't put any, um, not binding, um, 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 piping. So the pattern calls for piping, and I did not feel like doing piping. And I haven't made this before without piping. I think I've seen a few people post them though. Like I think it'll look okay, but I really don't, I don't know. What if it looks funny? I think it'll be fine. Not 100%. I forgot that before I made this, that was something I wanted to do was, um, look for pictures of other people's without piping. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's see what happens when I try to turn this right side out. Oh, you know what, before I do that, I'm going to trim off this extra on these connectors. I forgot that I was going to do that after I installed the rivets. It doesn't need to extend so far. I just make them extra long um, so that you have extra to work with. this in my lap so I'm sorry but you are not going to see me turn it right side up okay I got it turned there's a little bit of wrinkling but I think um, I'll hit it with the blow dryer and see if that helps so now what I'm going to do since this is all vinyl and again this is something that I might want to use the blow dryer for if I kind of roll the seams um, and it helps them to like poke out I'm not going to sew the interiors of her pocket closed on camera. Um, nothing new to learn there, I don't think. Yep, definitely going to use the blow dryer if I, you know, heat the vinyl up just a touch. Then, and then do this, and then it cools off. It will stay nice, and the seams will all be nice and pushed out. Okay, so for the most part, besides doing that, um, we're finished. This is like really amazing. Um, again, I'll push all the seams out so that they look nice and they're not like poked in like that. Um, We'll go ahead and attach the handles though, which I lost, like everything else. 
Okay, so I need to figure out, I want to be able to put the strap ends on, which I don't think will fit through the connector. So I think I have to put them on after, let me make sure they're going to fit over the end. Maybe I should have checked this beforehand. I think that the vinyl might be too thick. Well, the combination of the vinyl and the seatbelt webbing. Ah. I wonder if I can open it up a little bit. I don't think so. All right, well, I think I can get them on. I could trim the seatbelt webbing back. I need to melt the ends of the webbing, and then I think I can get them on. But I wanted to see if they would fit through, and they will. So I can put them on before I attach them to the bag. So let me go get a lighter. Okay, so I kind of um, melted the ends of my webbing a little bit and then like hammered the end of the webbing and vinyl strap with my scissors um, to get it to flatten out just a little bit so that I could get the strap end on. And now I can't find my like little tiny Phillips screwdriver that I need, of course, so... I don't know. I have to go to the grocery store. I might just buy one and finish this later. Like, you get the point, right? And I'll show the finished bag. I'm just going to attach the handles um, with rivets. So what I would do is put it through um, and I'll figure out where I want my rivet placements to be. And then I'll just pop the holes through and put the rivets in to hold it. And then it has like the fancy little strap ends on the back and the webbing on the back of the handles. And I think that sums up everything. Um, I'll have either a finished picture of the bag at the beginning of the video, or maybe I'll even put myself talking about it, but I don't know because I really hate to be on, have my own self on camera. So yeah, I'm going to finish this off camera because I need a Phillips screwdriver and I cannot find one. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped. Let me know if you have questions. Um, join my Facebook group. Make sure you click on the subscribe button for my videos. Um, because besides doing the ones for my patterns, I would like to do more like these of um, ones doing like different fun things. Applique or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't have to be applique. Um, just whatever I guess sounds fun. I need to do more fun sewing and less work type sewing. Um, and this is what I did. You do not, don't do this. Use caution because it catches on fire and I'm not responsible for anybody melting anything. But that's what I did. I melted the end of the webbing and then I hammer it with my scissors because I don't have a hammer right here. And it flattened it just enough that I could slide it in here. Still not the easiest, but again, this vinyl is pretty thick. So I think if you use a thinner material, you wouldn't have a problem, or if it was fabric. See? So, those are really pretty. So again, all of the hardware from Bedazzled Supplies, all of my vinyl is from Bob and Jen's Odds and Ends. Um, thread is from Saya Swag, Saya Swag Bags. Um, I think that covers everything, and I'm going to go buy a little screwdriver because who knows where mine is.